that's not acceptable to me. So I'm thinking about doing something uh, very different. I don't think it's ever been, I just don't want to be second guess, but that's not even second guess, that's called politics. I sadly, I probably do the same thing to them, okay? But any deal I make, toward the end, I'm gonna bring Schumer, at least offer him, and Pelosi. I'm gonna say, please join me on the deal. And by the way, I just see our new attorney general is sitting in the front row. Please stand up, no. Such an easy job he's got. He's got the easiest job in government. Thank you, and congratulations. That was a great vote yesterday. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. In your remarks, sir, you said that you were too new to politics earlier in your administration when you would have preferred that this be done. Is that an admission of how you might be changing on the job and? Well, I'm learning, I mean, I am learning. Don't forget, it's not like I've done this for, a senator came into my office and said, I've been running for office for 30 years. I've won seven out of seven. I did lose a couple when I was younger. I said, well, I've won one out of one, but you know, I never did politics before. Now I do politics. I, I will tell you, I'm very disappointed at certain people, particular one, for not having pushed this faster. Are you referring but to Speaker Ryan, Ryan, sir? Who? Speaker Ryan? Uh, let's not talk about it. Okay. What difference does it make? But they should have pushed it faster, they should have pushed it harder, and they didn't. They didn't. Uh, if they would have, it would have been a little bit better. In the meantime, I built a lot of wall. I have a lot of money, and I built a lot of wall. But it would have been nice to have gotten done, and I would like to see major immigration reform. And maybe that's something we can all work on, Bill, where we all get together and do major immigration reform, not just for a wall, for a barrier, for port of entry, for other things. We have a real problem. We have catch and release. You catch a criminal. Hi, Great Falls. We have so many other things. You have chain migration, where a bad person comes in, brings 22 or 23 or 35 of his family members because he has his mother, his grandmother, his sister, his cousin, his uncle. They're all in. You know what happened on the West Side Highway. That young wise guy drove over and killed eight people and horribly injured. Nobody talks about that. Horribly, like loss of legs and arms. Going 60 miles an hour, he made a right turn into a park on the West Side Highway along the Hudson River in New York. He had many people brought in because he was in the United States. It's called chain migration. And then you have the lottery. It's a horror show. Because when countries put people into the lottery, Thanks, Coop. they're not putting you in. They're putting some very bad people in the lottery. It's common sense. If I ran a country, boxers all the way. System of people going to the United States. I'm not going to put in my stars. I'm going to put in people I don't want. The lottery system's a disaster. I'm stuck with it. Mr. President, could you tell wait. us? It should have never happened. Okay. Mr. President, could you tell us to what degree some of the outside conservative voices helped to shape your views on this national emergency? I haven't talked about it. Look, uh, Sean Hannity has been a terrific, terrific uh, supporter of what I do. Not of me. If I changed my views, he wouldn't be with me. Rush Limbaugh, I think he's a great guy. He's like, I can speak for three hours without a phone call. Try doing that sometime. For three hours he speaks. He's got one of the biggest audiences in the history of the world. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. Try speaking for three hours without taking calls. Taking calls is easy. Okay, I'll answer this one, I'll answer that one. He goes for three hours, and he's got an audience that's fantastic. Wait, uh, they don't decide policy. In fact, if I went opposite, I mean, they have somebody, Ann Coulter. I don't know her. I hardly know her. I haven't spoken to her in way over a year. But the press loves saying Ann Coulter. Probably if I did speak to her, she'd be very nice. I just don't have the time to speak to her. I would speak to her. I have nothing against her. In fact, I like her for one reason. <clears throat> I definitely because agree. Like right at the beginning, who's going to win the election? She said Donald Trump. And the two people that asked her that question, smiled. They said, you're kidding, aren't you? No, nope. Donald Trump. So I like her. But she's off the reservation, but anybody that knows her understands that. 
But I haven't spoken to her. I don't follow her. I don't talk to her. But the press loves to bring up the name Ann Coulter. And you know what? I think she's fine. I think she's good, but I just don't speak to her. Um, Laura's been great. Laura Ingram. Tucker Carlson's been great. I actually have a couple of people on CNN that have been very good. I had some on MSNBC the other day. They did a great report of me. I say, where the hell did that come from? I think it was the only one in over a year. So the crazy thing is, I just had, as you know, Rasmussen, 52% in the polls. It's my highest poll number. And people get what we're doing. They get it. They really get it. And I'm honored by it. Yes, Jim Acosta. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I wonder if you could comment on uh, this disconnect that we seem to have in this country where you are presenting information about what's happening at the border, calling it an invasion, talking about women with duct tape over their mouths and so on, and yet there's a lot of reporting out there, there's a lot of crime data out there, there's a lot of uh, Department of Homeland Security data out there that shows border crossings at a near record low. Uh, that shows but un still, undocumented immigrants being crime still at lower levels. Of uh, that shows undocumented criminals or undocumented immigrants committing crime at lower levels than native-born Americans. Um, what, what do you I say? You don't, you don't really believe that's well, what, Do you really believe what, that's what do you, well, Take a look at our federal I believe, I believe in facts and statistics okay, and data. More quick. Let's go. But let me just ask you this. What do you <laughs> say to your critics who say that you Dude, are creating a national emergency? That you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall. Uh, you can get your what do you think? You think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons. Okay? Because your question is a very political question, because you have an agenda. You're CNN, you're fake news, you have an agenda. Uh, the numbers that you gave are wrong. Take Me a look too. At the federal prison population. See how many of them. <clears throat> percentage wise are illegal aliens just see go ahead and see it's a fake question yes go ahead he hopped in i think he's just trolling <laughs> thank you mr president just to follow up on that you you find uh crime reporting statistics numbers from your own border patrol numbers from this government show that the amount of uh illegal immigrants are down there is not violence on the border and that there's most no violence or there's not as much violence oh, as right. let, wait, this guy is delusional. Our border is worse than <clears throat> Iraq and Afghanistan. I understand a mile away from where I went. I I was there. I understand. That's not the question. The question is Do we forget about that? No, I'm not forgetting that. I'm asking you to clarify where you get your numbers because most of the uh, DEA crimes reporting statistics that we see show that drugs are coming across at the ports of entry, that illegal immigration is down and the violence is down. So what do you base okay. your facts on? Come on, let's go. Dude, he's and got the real you, info. Uh, no, Jesus. No, you get one. You get one. Well, the right. Just sit down. Wait, sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Could you Hell yeah. Sit down. You get one question. Uh, I get my numbers from a lot of sources, like Homeland Security, primarily. And the numbers that I have from Homeland Security <laughs> are a disaster. And you know what else is a disaster? The numbers that come out of Homeland Security, Kirsten, for the cost that we spend and the money that we lose because of illegal immigration. Billions and billions of dollars a month. Billions and billions of dollars. And it's unnecessary. So your own government stats are wrong, are you saying? No, no, I use many stats. Could you I share those stats, stats with us? Let me tell you, you have stats that are far worse than the ones that I use. But I use many stats, but I also use... Homeland Security. Right, hey, Coop, what do you mean by that, bro? Let's go, please. Just do Jam House. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to bring you back to China for a second. The White House put out a statement today. Speaking of borders. Coop, I've thought that same thing. Like, it's crazy. All the attention's down south, but what about up north? Think about it. I mean, obviously, you have. How big does that get? Well, though, if you look, the USMCA is right. I mean, Mexico is a disaster right. with all their cartels, but it's very complicated. There are think about what could happen up north. Up it's purely it's open. Very important because we were on the wrong side of every one of them. There is a possibility that I will extend the date. And if I do that, if I see that we're close to a deal or the deal is going in the right direction, 
I would do that at the same tariffs that we're charging now. I would not increase the tariffs. Let me also ask you about the debt, sir, because it's gone from a shade under 20 trillion from when you took office. Now it's a shade over 22 trillion and heading uh, in the wrong direction. What are your plans to, to reverse it? Well, it's all about growth. But before I really work. focus on that, and you have to remember, President Obama put on more debt in this country. Yeah, Coop, sadly, I feel like <clears throat> all the attention is going to be down south and something's going to happen up, happen up north. I mean, I really hope that's not the case, but. This guy's talking about the tr uh, the debt, like the like the president has any control over that. But first, I have to straighten out the military. The military was depleted, and if we don't have a strong military, that hopefully we won't have to use because it's strong. If we don't have a strong military, you don't have to worry about debt. You have bigger problems. So I have to straighten out the military. That's why I did the seven hundred and seven sixteen billion. But growth will straighten it out. You saw last month. The trade deficit went way down. Everybody said, what happened? Well, what's happening is growth. But before I can focus too much on that, a very big expense is military. And we have no choice but to straighten out our Is growth the only answer, sir? Or is yes, ma'am, go ahead. <laughs> I love him, dude. Thank you, Mr. President. On North Korea, back in the last summit, you guys came out with a pretty general agreement. Yes. I was wondering what you thought has... Uh, you know, been accomplished since the last summit, and then a lot. are we going to be seeing a lot concrete on yeah. denuclearization? Yeah, a lot's been accomplished. We're dealing with that. We're talking to them. When I came into office, I met right there in the Oval Office with President Obama, and I sat in those beautiful chairs, and we talked. It was supposed to be 15 minutes. As you know, it ended up being many times longer than that. And I said, what's the biggest problem? He said, by far, North Korea. And I don't want to speak for him, but I believe he would have gone to war with North Korea. I think he was ready to go to war. In fact, he told me he was still close to starting a big war with North Korea. And where are we now? No missiles, no rockets, no nuclear testing. We've learned a lot. But much more importantly than all of it, much more important, much, much more important than that, is we have a great relationship. I have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un. And I've done a job. In fact, I think I can say this. Prime Minister Abe of Japan gave me the most beautiful copy of a letter that he sent to the people who give out a thing called the Nobel Prize. He said, I have nominated you or respectfully on behalf of Japan. I am asking them to give you the Nobel Peace Prize. I said, thank you. Many other people feel that way too. I'll probably never get it, but that's okay. They gave it to Obama. <clears throat> You'll get it. You'll it. get it. He was there for about 15 seconds and he got the Nobel Prize. He said, oh, what do I get it for? <laughs> With me, I probably will never get it. But if you look at Idlib province... Hey, bear with me one second. I'm, I'm going to try to stabilize the camera for you. So I don't mess it up for you. Sorry about that. There we go. Perfect. Perhaps destroy 3 million people in order to get 35,000 terrorists. And I heard about it from a woman who had her parents and her brothers living there. And she said, please, please. And I thought... I said... No, it can't happen. What are you talking about? No, they're going to get... And I come home and I read a certain paper where the story was there that they were actually forming to go into... to really... to really do big destruction. And I put out a statement that you better not do it. And in all fairness to Russia and Iran and Syria, they didn't attack, or they're doing it surgically at least. Save a lot of people. We do a lot of good work. This administration does a tremendous job, and we don't get credit for it. But I think the people understand what we do. So Prime Minister Abi came there. I mean, it's the most beautiful five-letter, five-page letter. Nobel Prize. He sent it to them. You know why? Because he had rocket ships, and he had missiles flying over Japan. And they had alarms going off. You know that. Now all of a sudden they feel good, they feel safe. I did that. 
And it was a very tough dialogue at the beginning. Fire and fury, total annihilation. My button is bigger than yours and my button works. Remember that? You don't remember that. Hell and yeah. People said, Trump is crazy. Trump's not crazy. This guy is a genius. Everyone plays him like he's dumb. That's this is huge, you guys. Democrats don't want to play ball. He's going to do his own thing. The president's unlawful declaration over a crisis that does not exist does great violence to our constitution and makes America less safe, stealing from urgently needed defense funds for the security of our military and our nation. This is plainly a power grab by a disappointed president who has gone outside the bounds of the law to try to get what he failed to achieve in the constitutional legislative process. And the president yes. said that this will end up in the courts. More coverage no, on well. NBC, NBCnews.com. <clears throat> the president's NBC. protected. <sighs> All right, Coop. Hey, thanks for watching, man. Uh, dude, have a good day. You guys saw it here. Mattress firm, and there's no Walls getting built, right? For a clean deal. But it's at a cost. So with that, definitely Trump 2020. You guys have a great day. See you guys.